In James Ray's 40 Modern Studies for Clarinet, there is a jazz waltz piece called Exclusive. So you're one and two and three and one and two and three and. Uh, so being a jazz waltz, it's, it's going to have that swing feel, obviously. But there's lots of places where this can all fall apart and it just kind of loses its feel. So I'm going to play it through and then we'll just touch on a few of these rhythmic things that create so much confusion. So here it goes. <laughs> So we have a bunch of swan quavers. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and. So therefore, we have a whole bunch of long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. And where this all get confusing, it's because we see a couple of quavers in the first bar, and one of those quavers is actually the long quaver of the swing. And the other quaver is the short quaver of the swing. So they're totally different feels. Even though they look identical on the page, because we're swinging, they're going to take up a different proportion. Now remember, swing is based on triplets. So pineapple, pineapple, one and a two and a one and two, two, ba da. And because that other quaver lands on the offbeat, it is the short quaver. So long, short, long, short, long, short, one and two and three, and long, short, long, short, long. And because we have that crotchet staccato in the middle, it kind of creates it like oh, a bit of a bit of a silence, creates a bit of confusion in the rhythm, but just keep that quaver subdivision in your head and it all should come right. So if we broke it right down in the swan quavers. <laughs> We can start to hear how they're placed within the bar. And that's pretty much the core of this rhythm throughout this entire piece is that that quaver, crotchet, quaver, where that crotchet is staccato. So you get that kind of, um, the, remember, a staccato is creating detachment, so therefore it's shorting the note, um, but only in in the sense of like fear, like it's a, you release it early, but it's still going to take up all that space. So let's say you're not liking staccatos. It still takes up that space. So a bit of a tip to help with the swing. The very first quaver of every bar, or where the quaver shows up at the beginning of a bar, just linger in it. Just just feel like you're playing it longer than you normally would. You're not going to play it too long. There's no way you're going to end up playing it so long that it becomes a crotchet and the next note comes on beat two. You probably won't end up doing that. So you'll probably end up getting it the right length. Okay, just linger in it. Even that bar. That's a tricky bar, but again, just break it down into its quavers. One and two and three and one, and just in your head and you're looking at it, just place each of those quavers into that swung framework. And the tune continues. So 
I'm not going to go over fingering here, <laughs> but there's only one way to play this. We have some E-flats. That uses the right hand. Um, I've just got a basic clarinet here, so I haven't got any fancy E-flat on the left here. So you're using your right hand E-flats, therefore you have to use a left hand D-flat. There's no choice there. And although in bar 12 you could, and actually I do recommend, because we've played a B-flat, the B-flat takes up the left hand. So that frees up the right hand to get in position for that D flat. So we can, funny enough, you can actually keep that entire right hand down while you're playing a B flat. And it's not going to affect the pitch too much. So you can be infinitesimally close. It's infinitesimally. Oh my gosh, I got it wrong again. Right, so now we have his G flat. Make sure you're using that alternative fingering. We are moving by semitones, so we want to pass through those semitone fingerings that exist for a reason it is for those semitone movements so get that first finger banana key and we're just gliding through that slur tricky rhythm again but again just we want to keep to that swung framework one and two and three and one and two and three and, and linger on that first quaver of the bar Okay. And it should all work. Okay, so the B section of the piece. Pressure. So we have very smooth gliding section here. So the other one was a bit more staccato, a bit more attacked. This one's now your one and two and three and one and two and three, a bit more glidey. So we have again swung quavers one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one lead in and two and three and next phrase. Now, this is the gotcha rhythm. This G does not have, is not a lead in G. This one starts right on beat two. Two and three and one. It's not like the previous one. This one's right on beat two. You can hear my quaver subdivision, I made it explicit, it's always there, it's unrelenting. Someone in the band is doing swung rhythm somewhere, walking bass, lying, drum kit, anything, something's going to have that swing, even if you don't personally. Alright, so then we can embellish it a little bit more. exclusive.